Uh, the Mil Miller-Rabin primality test is more frequently used than the Fermat primality test, um, mostly because it um, it is gives you a higher assurance of primality than the Fermat test does, since they're both um, since they're both probabilistic. There is a version of the Miller-Rabin test that is not probabilistic, um, but that assumes the generalized Riemann hypothesis. But in this video, I'm going to do um, how to use the Miller-Rabin primality test. It is based on what's called the basic principles in some books, which states that um, if there is an x and a y such that x squared is congruent to y squared mod n, but x is not congruent to plus or minus y mod n, then n is composite. The general algorithm for using this method is to first find n minus 1 such that it equals 2 to the k times m. Second, to choose a, which is greater than 1 but less than n minus 1. And three, to compute um, b naught equals a to the m mod n. And then um, from there, bi equals bi minus 1 squared, which would be mod n. Um, but I'll explain what that actually means in the example. Okay, so for this example, we want to find out if 561 is prime. So we're saying n equals 561. So for step one, we find n minus 1, 561 minus 1, so that it's equal to 2k minus n, 2 to the k minus, or times n, excuse me. So first we want to find the k. If we find the k, we'll have the m as well. Um, the way I'm going to do that is take n minus 1, 560, and divide it by 2 to the k starting starting with 1. You get 280. And then I just moved up and changed k to 2. And I just kept, kept, kept going until um, until um, so I kept going until I found a 2 to the k where it was not equal to an integer. And then I just take the 1 before that since I wanted an integer, but I also want the largest k I can, I can find. Um, so I found that 560 over 2 to the 4th equals 35, which implies that 560 equals 2 to the 4th times 35. In other words, k equals 4 and m equals 35. For step two, I chose a to be equal to two. I could have chosen three, could have chosen four, it doesn't really matter, but I chose two because it's a nice small number and it works. Um, next, I wanted to compute b naught equals two, which is my a, to the 35, my m, mod 561, mod n. And I get that it equals to 263. Now, what I'm looking for in this step three is I want to get um, it equal to plus or minus one. Is B not plus or minus one mod 561? No, it's not. So therefore, I have to move on to the next B. I want to calculate B1, which is equal to BO, the previous B, squared. So basically, we take the number that we just got, square it, and then um, mod at 561. So we find that that equals 166 mod 561, which is still not equal to plus or minus 1 mod 561. So therefore, we go on to the next one. So B2 will be equal to the B1 squared. So we take 166 squared, and we get that it equals 67 mod 561, which is not equal to plus or minus 1 again. So we um, keep going. So b3 equals b2 
or 166 squared, or excuse me, our 67 squared. So 67 squared we find is equal to 1 mod 561. Now at this point, we, we know that um, we, get, we have a positive 1 mod 561. The positive 1 implies composite, where negative 1, if we had gotten a negative 1, it would have implied prime. Therefore, ours is positive 1, so 561, our n, is composite.